My name is Salman Afiz. I'm a professional cinematographer, editor and colorist and this is my first tutorial video here on YouTube uh, where I'm starting a series of tutorials in which we are going to go in depth and detail about different effects and different transitions and different tips about how to make your videos uh, you know look awesome. Hit the subscribe button so that you can follow along. Today's video is about sky replacement, a brand new effect that DaVinci Resolve 18.1 is offering and it's an AI based effect that means that you can create your own skies uh, you can create your clouds uh, you can move those clouds over time and you can track all those things in one so let's jump in and see what we can do with this effect so we are here in the edit page we've got these four clips and let's start off with this one which has got a pretty dull sky for that we'll need to go to the color page and I've already done some of the primary corrections so that we get a good starting point. Uh, all we need to do is that we need to select the portion of the footage where, you, where we need to replace the sky. So for that, I'm going to add new node by pressing Alt S and I'm going to label it the mask. And you can also add a new node by going to color nodes and you can add a serial node from here. So now that we have this node selected, Let's go to the qualifier, select this, and let's do our selection. Now, we're not able to see the selection because we have this highlight mode turned off. So we can turn this highlight mode on by clicking here, or we can alternatively press Shift plus H to you know, turn on the highlights mode. So now we can see we've got a good selection over here. What we can do is that we can blur it out a little bit so that it's smoother increase the clean black a little bit that's looking good now let's go to the effects and type in sky and you've got this sky replacement I'm going to drag in to the node tree and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to delete this output link by coming towards the end of this uh, where I can see a blue link. So if I click it, it's removed. Now I'm going to connect this green with the green and output with the output. And now I'm going to connect the alpha of the mask to the alpha input of the sky. And now we can see a black sky. So <laughs> let's go do the sky replacement and see what we can do uh, first of all we have this sky mask adjustment so most of the times I what I like to do is that I like to do my mask adjustments uh, before the sky replacement thing but if you want to you know work with the edges you can shift the edges you know you need to refine them you can do that over here um, I'm going to leave it as it is and let's go to the artificial sky and let's increase the sky opacity and boom what you're seeing is an artificially generated sky and you can play around with different settings to make it more realistic i can select the horizon height i can bring it up a little bit so that it's more towards the realistic sides so let's decrease the softness a little bit uh, just like that I can change the sky color perhaps we want something like this now the very cool part is that you can create your own clouds in here so by cranking up the cloud opacity you can start to see some clouds in the sky and you can increase the scale of the clouds you can play with the shape uh, you know you can add some more details as you add some more detail in the clouds you can start to see some sharp clouds and you can actually work with the fill how much the clouds are filling in the environment and you can also work with the contrast of the clouds like if they're less contrasty or if they're more I'm going to bring it to the default and I think this looks kind of more realistic so let's go down and 
we also have another option of adding an artificial hotspot like a sun uh, in the sky. So if we crank it up, we can see that we are introducing a hotspot in here. We can move it around and let's, I would like to change the horizon color perhaps. Let's bring it more towards the yellowish orange tint. Okay, so now you have this cool looking sky and you want it to be tracked with the movement of your shot and you've got that right in this effects panel where you go to the sky position and you've got this tracking option so let's say we track it using the track foreground option and we press track forward so we have this sky tracked but it's not looking pretty natural because uh, it's giving us very weird kind of movements in there. So let's try the track original sky option. It's looking better. Yeah. So now the problem that we're facing is that we have these black edges over here. That's because of the size of the sky. So what we can do is that we can increase the size. Uh, we can adjust the position of the sky as well, right? And what we can do is that we can also select this auto size for motion option, which can automatically size it for you. So I think let's change the color of the clouds a little bit, like the horizon. That looks good. So it's already looking pretty nice. The sky is properly tracked. And we can see the movement in here now another cool thing that you can do in here is something with the cloud time you can actually change the way clouds move so let's say you wanted to make it a time-lapse shot so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go to the start of this clip I'm going to add a cloud time point right here and come to the end of this clip and I increase the cloud time till here perhaps and let's play it back and see so a quick tip here uh, if you're working with some effects and you want a bigger view uh, what you can do is that you can press shift plus F to get a bigger view and you also get these effect controls so this way you can work on more details. So let's go to the other options that we have in this effect, like sky integration. You can actually uh, add some lens distortion, which you can use to your benefit. You can, you know, defocus it, uh, which is not going to work for this shot because uh, this is a pretty wide shot and we're supposed to have a focused sky. So you can also play around with the exposure, right? Another cool thing that you can do within this effect is that you can also play around a little bit with the foreground. So if I select this, I can brighten it up. I can add some more saturation. I can introduce some more temperature changes in it. Uh, but I think that is something that is better done in a proper node so but you've got this option then you've got this global blend and what you can do is that you can you know decrease it a little bit so that you know it looks natural and this way you're introducing some of the original sky into the footage as well so that's more believable and the composite that you're making is much smoother so i like to keep it like around 0.8 So let's talk about the problems that we face with this effect. So the main problem that uh, I face most of the times is the tracking thing. So this shot that we were doing had a pretty simple straight movement. So that's why we got a good, uh, you know, tracking and we got a good looking sky that was tracked with the background. So let's go back to another shot, which I've already, uh, you know, done the mask. I've already replaced the sky and 
what we need to go uh, do is that we need to go to the sky position and let's select the track foreground option and let's track now you can already see that the sky is kind of stretching so if we play it back the sky is stretching and even if we auto size from if we select auto size for motion even then the sky is not tracking in a better way so let's try another option and let's go to the track original sky and let's see it's better but not very good because at the end we are getting this wobbling movement which is not looking good so to solve this problem what we can do is that we can go and select this option called use fx tracker so with this what we're going to do is that we can use the native uh, color page tracker to track the data we're going to find out um, you know a far away spot that is uh, closer to the sky so all we need to do is that we need to go to this tracker over here and it's currently set to tracker window right so what we need to do is that we need to click this fx uh, tracker option when we click that and when we start to track it we can see that it's saying no live features to track that's because we haven't selected a point to track over here in the fx tracker i'm going to select this plus point button so it's going to give me this blue point let's find a spot in here that remains there throughout the video and that has a good contrast so i think so this can be a good point because once you get a good contrast that's where you get a good track so let's select this point over here let's go to the start of our footage and let's track it so as you can see it's doing a pretty good job of tracking the sky the only problem that we're left with is that we have some edges over here so we can simply go and increase the size of the sky a little bit and let's see if it's all right let's shift the y position that's where you get this okay and now let's see so this way we've got a good track i will always recommend you to use this fx tracker option because the built-in uh, color page tracker is pretty good and accurate in its job so if you've got a movement that is more complicated or that is not just a straight movement i think using this option is going to get you a pretty good track for the sky so that's it for the tutorial today thanks for watching i hope you liked it subscribe to my channel for more videos like this coming every week Oh, 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 oh,